Welcome to Career Tipper Podcast, hosted by Michelle Beatty. The Career Tipper Podcast is a motivational resource that shares career and entrepreneurial tips by industry experts that will help amazing people evolve to their professional best. And now your host, Michelle Beatty. Episode 6 of the Career Tipper Podcast features B. Tabron. In 2013, Bee's back was against the wall and she needed to change her life for the better in every area. She had to determine a way to get her finances in order and turn to a longtime passion of baking into profits. Fast forward to 2018, Bee has transitioned her hobby into an international baking brand that has led her to being a sought after baker for her edible goodies and coaching others on how to create income from their baking passions, too. I'm your host, Michelle Beatty, career confidence author and coach. V, welcome to the Career Tipper Podcast. Wow, thank you so much for that beautiful introduction. I'm so glad to be here talking to you. (laughs) Thank you, thank you. Let's get started. So, V, what was your journey to becoming a professional baker? Oh, it was a journey that... I don't believe in accidents, but I always say it kind of happened by accident because I wasn't planning for it. I was broke as a joke. Um, I couldn't pay my rent, my bills. I didn't have electricity. Uh, My Bank of America account was $500 in the red because I was trying to pay my rent. And I would go home and I would just sit in the dark and I would read tons of books all the time. And a book I came across was Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil. And as I'm reading, something clicked for me. I don't remember what part of the book I was reading. I was just reading. Something hit me, and I felt like a voice said, bake. And I started cracking up because I didn't have any electricity, so I didn't know how I was going to get that done to begin with. And I'm like, "Uh, you know, pushing it out of my head. And I heard it again. Like, I feel like I heard the voice in my mind say, bake. And I'm like, okay. I called a friend. I asked her if I could use her kitchen. She's like, yeah, girl, whatever. Um, The spare key is there. I'm never home anyway. And I used her ingredients, of course, because I didn't have any money. And I made snickerdoodle cookies. Um, The only thing I had, I think I had like seven, eight dollars. I know it was less than 10 bucks. And I went to Walmart and I got clear cookie bags that came with the ties Mm -hmm. And the little address labels that you stick on the back of the um, envelopes when you're sending envelopes. And I wrote my cell phone number on there. And I went door to door and I sold these cookies, uh, parking lots, barber shops. I mean, people started chasing me down the street for the cookies. <laughs> and um, I made 200 bucks in one hour and I got my electricity turned back on. And that was like the birthing of what is now called Saber V. But then it wasn't anything. It was just a girl selling cookies trying to not be homeless. So, yeah, that, that's how I got started. <laughs> I love it. And I enjoy your cupcakes in a jar. I think they're yummy. And I <laughs> like them for myself. And I like to gift them to people, too. Yes. They make a- amazing gifts. So thank you so much for that. <laughs> oh, yeah, definitely. So, B, what was the moment that you knew that being the cupcake lady was your purpose? Because everyone liked my stuff and I felt like they felt connected to it and I would get in the kitchen and I would turn on music and I would just be singing and dancing and baking and it was just like this really magical experience for me that I was like, I love doing this. I love making people happy through food and people saying like, girl, this is so good. Oh, it reminds me of my grandmama's red velvet. And (laughs) girl, you skinny, but you can cook the heck out of some banana. But it was just a really good um, experience and connection that I felt. And I knew then that I could do this for the rest of my life and be really, really happy. So that's how that's how I knew. I love that. And so it just led you to enjoy your life on a daily basis. Right. Absolutely. It's very fulfilling. Like, Now it's definitely a business. It's no longer a hobby, but it's so fulfilling because I get to be a part of so many awesome milestones. Like I'm making an 80th birthday cake right now, or someone ordered on the website and they sent a birthday surprise to their best friend or their grandma. And it's like, wow, I get to be a part of all of your amazing life moments. And it just, it makes me feel good. So 
I love it. Intentional, <laughs> being intentional. So why should professionals consider turning their passion of baking into a profitable business? Because there's a lot of people that bake or make amazing snacks or lemonade. And it's like, okay, you know, people like it. You always get great, yummy compliments. Do you right. realize that's another stream? Like, what are some things they should consider? Well, some people don't know that that's their thing. I didn't realize it until my back was against the wall. That that I always had this gift or this talent or this drive for baking, but I didn't know that was my thing because it didn't seem realistic. I was taught you just go to school, and I, you know, and I did, and I got my degree and all those things, but I was taught that you climb the corporate ladder. You know, you don't go after the the other things, the passion projects, the creativity and all that. But that's the thing that makes your soul sing. So, you know, you can have a full out business. I mean, it may not be to the extent of Saver B, v, but you can be having cake clients in your church or cake clients on your job. And it's once you pursue those passions, then it can become a real thing and you can turn that passion into profit because when I started, I didn't start it as a business. Mm -hmm. I started it out of pure desperation. I was like, okay, I know I can do this. Let me just sell these, you know, it was very humbling for me. And it turned into this wonderful, magical thing. So a hobby is now a full out on brand and I absolutely love it. So it's like, if you have a drive for cooking or baking or you know, anything in the kitchen, you can start right there in your kitchen. If you're good at it, telling people about it, giving them samples, letting them support you, and you can create a whole nother stream of income. And it's, you know, up to you as far as you want to take it. If you want to make it a full out business or if you just want to make it a side hustle, you can definitely do either one. So which leads me to ask you this. I have seen you do this. You have constantly reinvented your brand. So what are some things that you have done to reinvent your brand because you just keep upgrading, upgrading, upgrading. So what was what has that journey been like for you? Because I sometimes think people can get, become maybe slightly intimidated by mm -hmm. looking at another brand and not feeling like it's OK to start where you are. Mm -hmm. Well, what I did, everything that you see now, I mean, has been a process of five years. It was not like that. I was just taking little, like I told you, I had cookie bags. I didn't have labels. I had just plastic clear bags from Walmart. They were a couple bucks. I had twist ties. But the product inside tasted so amazing that people were like, okay, well, you know, the packaging isn't that great. But it tasted good. <laughs> then as I started to grow and sell more, then I could take the money that I made and get professional labels done and get a logo done and you know, redo the packaging and buy the supplies that I need and get a shipping account and all those types of things. So you just start where you are. I started with my camera phone, you know, just posting things on Instagram. Now it's like, okay, I have a team, graphic design, web design, all that. I have a professional camera. I have all those things because I started out just using what I had. And then once I made more money, then I was able to reinvest back into the business. So I'm always reinvesting back into the business, thinking of ways to make it look better because this is food. You know, I don't want anybody looking like, oh, that look like cooking for bay. Like, no, it looks your products are a reflection of you, but just start where you are. You can't look at where I am now and say that your stuff has to look like that because Five years ago, my stuff didn't look like that. I was just taking pictures on the camera phone. I was playing with the effects on Instagram. And Instagram didn't have as many effects as they have now. There weren't as many apps as there are now. So I was really just using what I had, leveraging myself on Facebook, DMing people, saying, hey, I see your birthday's coming up, just building relationships. And um, that's how it's able to look as amazing as it looks now. But you just start where you are. And um, I always say God will provide the rest. Indeed. Now, you're definitely using your influence to cultivate greatness. And I was so tickled to see that you launched Saber V University last year in 2017. Yes. Yes. I think that was just fantastic. <laughs> so what are a few of your lessons and success stories from this new venture? Well, a lot of people, I get so many DMs from struggling bakers, and I understand because I was a struggling baker at one time, where you feel like, 
okay, I'm doing good, but my products are so good, but I only had two customers this week. What's the disconnect? Where are all the customers? Is it, you know, oh my gosh, only during October through December when it's holiday season, like uh, Thanksgiving, Christmas, do I get a super influx of customers? How can I sustain that amount of value throughout the whole year? You know, when people are fasting in January, for how can I market to those people? How can I just keep my income coming in all year round for my dessert brand? And I'm like, I'm not the only person that's having this problem. So I looked at the messages and, you know, people are saying like, how do I make beautiful newsletters talking about my food like you do? So I had a MailChimp course for bakers and foodies and teaching them how to do that. Um, The type of things you should have on your website, where your customers are, how to leverage yourself, how to find more customers, how to define your target market if you're a baker. Because bakers, we like to bake everything, but it's impossible. So you might just be really good at making chocolate chip cookies. You are the chocolate chip cookie lady. You know, how to define that niche and then find out where your customers are and figure out how to search them on Instagram and build your following organically because you don't have to have 20,000 followers to make money in your particular industry. I know people that have 400 followers that make money in their industry because that 400 people, they really love them and they really support them and they really buy their products. So those are the type of things. Um, how to make money from your phone um, are things that I teach in Saver University, but specifically for those in the food market. Um, and it's been a blessing just to connect with people that I might not ever meet in person to know that I've been able to help kickstart something for their dream and their brand. And um, there's one, I'm going to give her a shout out, Sugar Fix. Uh, She is like doing it. She's in Atlanta. She went through my program. She is making like a couple hundred bucks a day making cookies and all types of stuff. She's still, I'm still reeling her in because she wants to make a million different things, but she's really good at it and um she's doing it so those are the type of testimonies i've been able to have because i stepped out on faith and shared my story and now i'm able to help other bakers build with saver university so that's it is an online program you log in you listen to the modules you do your worksheets and then you're able to immediately spring into your purpose which obviously is something in the area of baking i love it congratulations (laughs) to you with that I think it's awesome. So, <laughs> so I know also on your, through Saber V, you also have a really, a blog full of wonderful educational tips and insight, teaching people how to create a happy home, um, cultivate memories, relationships, how to be creative and creating memories, lasting memories, a legacy, right? So why are you committed to helping people find and identify easy to implement creative ways to celebrate life? Because life is holistic. Um, I feel like when we're unhappy, it's because we are spreading ourselves too thin in one area. So you may be completely, you know, someone may be married and they're just completely zoned in on their relationship or their kids or something like that. And they have no outlet and they're spreading themselves too thin in that area. Or you're climbing the corporate ladder and you're just so focused on that that you have no time for social engagement or friendship or just enjoying life, you know? So I believe in being holistic. I'm like, Saver V, I love so much, but it's a part of my life. It's not my entire life. I have friends, I have family, I have love, I have all of those sorts of things. And all of those areas of our lives need to be celebrated. You know, even though I feel like I've accomplished a lot with Saver V, I celebrate those moments. I'm like, oh, this is a great accomplishment this happened, you know, I landed another corporate account that I'm going to be doing their desserts, you know, for the holidays. This is huge. Woo! Let's go spend a weekend on vacation. Like, don't get so sucked into that process that I'm not enjoying life. So like right now, I'm going to be spending a lot of time tonight baking and doing this wonderful cake. But tomorrow, I am hanging out. I am enjoying my life. I'm going to go have a cocktail and just keep things as balanced as possible. So yeah, that's why I'm just an advocate, like to enjoy your life because we're not circling back around here as far as I know, coming back as a tiger and all that foolishness. So <laughs> you better enjoy your life now. <laughs> yeah, there's this there's no rehearsal. We are not in a dress right. rehearsal to this thing called life. 
Absolutely. <laughs> you have to max it out. <laughs> okay, V, so what's the best advice you've received professionally and how has it transformed your business? The best advice I've received professionally, um, recently I've been binging on sermons, anything Miles Monroe, anything T.D. Jakes. And what I've been learning is that to be a great person in life and business, you have to be emotionally intelligent. Um, things are going to come along to rock your boat. You can't control people. People will love you one day and not like you tomorrow. And it has nothing to do with the purpose that God has for your life. And so I've been learning to just dive into God, dive into myself, dive into my purpose. And that's where the magic is happening. That's where I'm flourishing. And so I'm making sure that I tend more to myself. And so for entrepreneurs, um, because we're trying so hard to, you know, hit these bottom line margins or to, you know, land this next interview or to, are you forgetting about yourself? And so I'm making sure at this space in my life, I'm just tending to who I am as a woman and all of these wonderful, magical things are happening because I'm remaining balanced. I'm being conscious of being emotionally intelligent. And um, that's what I got from like all the recent sermons I've been binge watching <laughs> is that emotional intelligence is key to be a successful a person in life and a successful person in business. So that's the best professional advice I've gotten recently. High five. <laughs> Emotional intelligence is a deal breaker for someone to be successful in their career. I totally agree with you. And no matter if you have the book smarts and the common sense, if you are not able to manage your emotions, yeah. You can really change the perspective of how people see that it will be extremely hard to recover from. And, you know, you're right. in business, so mm -hmm. you always have to think about how you're being perceived. Right. Yeah. And that's why I'm always um, I try to be as open and honest as possible. Um, and you've witnessed that on social media and online space, because I feel like my blessings or my experiences are not just for me. And if I experienced a challenge, I can share that with you. And that might be your next breakthrough. So I'm always, you know, transparent because energy is transferable. And if I had a bad day and I told you how I made my breakthrough, then you might get to your next breakthrough, whether that's in your business, your relationship, whatever it is. And so that's why I'm always making sure I'm sharing and giving of myself as much as possible because, you know, we're not here for ourselves. We're here for to make the world go round. You know, we're here for each other. I agree. And not only from me following on social media, but I've also invested not only in your yummy goodies and your cakes in a <laughs> jar, but I've also participated in some of your classes. And one that I really enjoyed was your meditation class. Um, yeah. I thought that was an awesome resource that you offered and you made it very easy to mm -hmm. implement. Um, you were very informative, but I really enjoyed the application exercises that you gave us on a daily basis. And I think that was really helpful. But in that, your transparency was appreciated and you were honest. And I think that helped us as students connect with you. So Yes, kudos to the transparency. <laughs> Thank you so much. Kudos, Thank you. kudos. So <laughs> what is your strategy and or your mindset? Like, how have you shortened the learning gap for your business needs and growth? Um, technology. Technology, technology. Um, the apps. Everything I do is being done through some app or some online platform and automation. Because we can't do everything and we can't be everywhere every time, but you can be when there's automation, when you're using things like Hootsuite, when you're using MailChimp and you click that it auto feeds to Twitter, when you're using, you know, things like um, a kind of square to feed on your Instagram and things like that, um, you can be everywhere. So I just make sure that I take the time to sit down at this laptop that I'm sitting at pump out the newsletters, schedule them for, you know, this time and um, make sure that I'm interacting on Facebook and things like that because automation will save your life as a business owner because life is going to happen 
and your customers, they don't care about your personal life. If they are ordering a product, they expect to get a product. That's like if I'm walking in Target, you know, I don't know that the CEO's cat died that day. I'm going in Target because I'm getting some of the products that Target has and I expect for that need to be met. The same happens, you know, in your business and life is going to happen as an entrepreneur, but that shouldn't affect my customers. So I need to make sure that automation serves me when life happens. So that's how I've been able to shorten the gap and find some semblance of balance in my life as well. So that's been very helpful. So I tell everybody, no matter what industry you're in, there's a way you can automate a lot of those things that you use every day so that you can still stay in front of your customer and be engaged with them. Automation. (laughs) Yes, it is. And I think it's too, you know, I think people have to be willing to make the financial investment into automation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I know some people, depending upon where you are in your business, some people it's a no brainer because they value their time and they look at it as preserving their time. But some Mm -hmm. people are nervous because they're still trying to figure it out. Um, I've, I've coached some people and they're just like, but Michelle, I have to pay for this. I have to pay for Square. I have to pay for da da da. I'm like, okay, but you're in business, right? And exactly. or you're launching your side hustle, and this is a part of growing your brand, right? Exactly. And I, you know, at one point when I was just starting out on the days when there was no money, um, it was a big deal to be paying. MailChimp, $25 a month. And then it's like, oh my gosh, they took it out of my account. I didn't know. And now it's like, oh my gosh, how did I live without this stuff? You know, um, but if you just step out on faith, I mean, I just feel like God makes provision. There's been days in my business over the past five years. I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know what I'm going to do. And then something miraculous happens. Someone goes on the website and orders like $300 worth of dessert. Like things like that happen. But miracles can't get to you if you don't step out on faith. You know, so because I stepped out on faith, miracles happen in my life daily. And I'm now in the position to bless someone else or encourage someone else or change someone else's life just because I stepped out on faith. So I always tell people like, yeah, we're in business, but we're waiting on you to get in the game as well. Like you have something magical that only you can provide to us in this space. And once you provide it to us, it's going to push the world forward because you answered the call. So I always tell people, just answer the call. Like we're here to support you. There are people ready to cheer you on, but they don't know you exist yet because you haven't stepped out there. So I just tell like, go for it. Like go for it. You don't have to be ready. None of us are ever ready and you just do it. You know, it's like that mom having her first child. Nobody is going to be prepared for that, you know, Mm -hmm. but you get ready and your instincts kick in and you begin to nurture and love. And then you're wondering like, oh, my gosh, this is the best thing. So you just got (laughs) to step out there right now. My baby is my business, you know, and I I make sure I tend and nurture to it every day. And sometimes it's fussy and sometimes and I just tend to it and love it. And it it comes back. It pays me back so much. Oh, I love it. Now, I know that you're a pay it forward advocate is just who you choose to be in this life. So Mm -hmm. how has paying it forward assisted you in advancing your career? Oh, my gosh. Um, I'm in a very energetically giving space right now because you can't expect to get anything if you're not giving anything. And I just believe in principles and I try my best to operate my business on what God says. So I'm living by certain principles, um, faith that if I give this, it is moving the kingdom of God forward. That's just how I live my life through that principle. So um, I try to give everything and I give in an abundance and it never returns void ever. Um, And when I first started giving, it was a challenge because I wasn't a giver. Um, And so I was really scared and I was thinking from a mindset of lack. And I just took God at his word and I did it anyway. And it just comes back abundantly. 
So I always tell people, um, you have something to give. If you feel like you don't have money to give, you could give time, you can give encouragement, you can give support. There are so many different ways that we could give. We all have something that we can offer someone else that can probably get them to their next level in life or brighten their day. I mean, you can give a smile. I'm always talking around. I'm in the grocery store. Everyone in the grocery store knows my name. I'm like, hey, boo. I'm hugging the lady at the checkout line. You know, one of them, she reminds me of my grandma. She's always kissing me on the cheek. Like, I come from the mindset that everywhere I go, people love me, even if they don't. You know, but mm-hmm. in my mind, they do. So it affects the energy in the environment in the room, I know that I can change the atmosphere. So even if you're just giving yourself, um, you can you can change lives. You can change the whole atmosphere in the room, and that's how powerful we are. So, you know, that's something you could give. It doesn't always have to be money, but the money will come if you just start giving of yourself. You won't be able to help it. Something to come over you. Good advice. <laughs> so comfort zones. You going from. Selling your cupcakes to barber shops on the street to now being an international, Saver B being an international brand, you definitely had to switch up your comfort zone. Yeah, yeah. So, how often do you switch up your comfort zone to achieve your next level goal for your brand? Um, I try to do something that scares the crap out of me all the time. Um, I try to do things that don't make sense in my head because normally um, when we have a vision, if it's the right vision and it's for us, it doesn't make sense. So I try to live that way. I'm like, okay, this doesn't make sense. How can I make it make sense? I can make it make sense by action and implementation and journaling and putting it on a vision board and then taking the little steps every day that will get me to that big goal. So um, breaking out of my comfort zone are just tiny action steps every day that gets me to the big goal. And once you get to that goal, there's always another one. There's always another level of achievement. So my comfort zone is just breaking out of my shell every day and waking up and showing up and making a decision to just keep moving forward. So your comfort zone, your comfort zone shifts forces you to raise the bar. Absolutely. Absolutely. Every single day I'm thinking of ways to be better or make a better cake or add something else that I didn't add before. Take a risk. You know, are they going to notice that I switched up this recipe? I'm always trying um, something new because it's the way that I stretch myself. So I always try to scare myself a little bit in the (laughs) greatness. Indeed. What brings you joy? Ah. I mean, just being in a warm kitchen, being surrounded by family and love, and that's what brings me joy, just being at peace, being able to be surrounded by people I love while living the life that I love and having that support is really all I need. You know, I don't I don't need much. I'm very simple. Everything else that you see is just an extra benefit. Um, It's just an extra blessing. It's just the icing on the cake that I've already had. So, (laughs) yeah, I've never required much, but um, family, friendship, and good food. (laughs) Yeah, good food is always good. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, V, I very much appreciate you being a guest on the Career Tipper podcast. Please share your favorite quote or affirmation that keeps you creating career tipping moments. Mm. I think one that um, I've been very mindful of, I encountered it in high school. Uh, Someone wrote it in a yearbook that said, you don't have to blow out my candle to make yours shine brighter. And in the social media space, we see people competing. You know, it's like, I'm the flyest. No, I'm the flyest. No, I'm bossy. No, I'm bossier. You know, who cares? <laughs> we can all thrive in our lane. When you're living in your purpose, doing what you're supposed to do, I don't care if she's a hairstylist and she's a hairstylist. You guys are different. You guys are, you know, one may specialize in haircuts, one may specialize in hair color. It doesn't matter. I don't have to blow out your candle 
to make myself look better. We can all thrive and be great and be magical and be who God called us to be. So that quote has stuck with me since I was a teenager. And I always make sure that I'm trying my best to live with integrity and support others and be cheerleaders for other bakers and support them. Because even if you're making cupcake jars, you're not going to do it like V. You're going to do it like how you do it. And I want to be your cheerleader and help you do it like how you're actually supposed to do it. So, yeah, that's that's my little life motto. <laughs> Bravo. <laughs> Bravo. So please share how the listeners can get in touch with you. You can find the yummy cupcakes at savorv.com. That's S A V O R V.com. And you can enter cupcakes to get you some sweet savings on that thing. You can also find me at savorv on Instagram, um, Facebook, and my personal Instagram is Domestic Queen V. I love meeting people, talking to them, chatting. I will be your new social media bestie. So that's how you can find me. <laughs> Awesome. And you can find me, Michelle Beatty, at careertipper.com and on Instagram at careertipper. Sign up for our newsletter. Find out who's coming up next on the podcast and amazing career tipping tips. Thanks for joining today. And remember to be confidently you. Thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Career Tipper podcast. We're grateful for our listeners and guests. For more resources about how to evolve to your professional best, share your comments and feedback about this episode and your suggestions for future guests, visit careertipper.com. Until next time, be confidently you.